Experiments in the Reproduction of Late Archaic Copper Tools, a presentation by Giovanni Frigny in Minnesota, USA. Hello, I'm Giovanna Frigny, and I'm here in Minnesota in the Lake Superior region of North America. This area is known for large deposits of native, nearly pure copper along the shores of Lake Superior and in the peninsulas of Upper Michigan. These areas are where copper could be found on the shore or in deposits on land. The size ranged from small nuggets to boulders. It was here that people from the late Archaic, 6,000 years ago, discovered how to work the copper and make it into tools and ornaments. It could have been that somebody picked up a piece of copper and hit it, thinking it would flake or break, but instead it deformed. And from that, an entire industry developed. Objects made of copper from this area were found at the ritual site of Cahokia in Illinois and throughout the Hopla complex as far south as Georgia. The copper here is nearly pure. You can see some surface inclusions of quartz and the crystal structure. This was collected near the mines in Houghton, Michigan. Nuggets found on beaches are usually tumbled so they have a smoother surface. Copper was hammered into sheets using stone, antler, and wood tools. It could be cut into shapes to create pierced ornaments, knives, arrowheads, spears, and various other tools. Of course, this is copper. Hammering compresses the metal, and it can create a hard, sharp tool, but it's not the most durable of materials. The bright, shining metal might have been more of a status symbol than a useful weapon. At this time, the people of the late Archaic were aceramic. There is no evidence of high temperature work, that is, they had, didn't have the technology to make pottery, so there were no crucibles or the ability to smelt metals. The Science Museum of Minnesota in St. Paul has a large collection of these tools, a few of which you see here. A typology of the tools was created by Whitry in the 1950s, showing a progression from spearheads and points that are hammered to an even thickness and then flattened along the edges to a sophisticated socketed spearhead that has a triangular profile. The experiments in replicating these objects were conducted by Cushing in 1894 and later by Willoughby in 1903. Right now I am hammering a fairly flat piece of copper into a knife using a granite hammer stone and a limestone anvil. Once it's hammered flat, I can cut out the shape using sharpened antler tools and hammering it on a piece of leather. I don't have to cut all the way through the metal since I can abrade this raised surface on the other side to create cut holes or smoother edges. The real challenge was making larger three-dimensional objects, particularly these types of spearheads that are triangular in cross-section. Since casting technology was unknown, the people here developed a technique called swaging. This is a practice where metal is hammered into stone or hardwood molds so that it's pushed into the negative shape of the mold. Swaging was the best explanation for creating a three-dimensional object from individual nuggets of copper. The copper working of the late archaic was a horizon, meaning that the techniques were developed and then later fell out of use. Copper working ended in this area by 1000 BC. On Isle Royale, there are still the remains of ancient mines where fires were set to crack the rock and pry out the metal with antler tools. The same technology is seen in Ross Island in Ireland. These areas are protected since few early Chalcolithic mining sites remain. Most mines continued to be exploited, destroying the evidence of earlier workings. Likewise, early copper objects are rare. This makes the late archaic metalworking of the Lake Superior region significant for the entire study of early metallurgy. It provides a clear example of a period of metalworking that has been lost for much of the rest of the world and gives insight into the earliest examples of the development of the craft. My thanks to the Science Museum of Minnesota for the use of the photographs. For more information about the late archaic copper working and regional archaeology, please visit smm.org. Thanks also to Ellie Frenyi for help with filming and to John McArdle of ZRS Fossils for the copper. Thank you for watching. I have some references here, and if you would like to know more about my work, please visit my website, Ancient Tools and Craft, at ancienttools.net.